In this video, I'm going to walk you through using Azure Data Factory with Mapping Data Flows to build a simple pattern for loading a data warehouse. So, ADF is a platform as a service in the cloud in Azure, and Mapping Data Flows is the visual data transformation piece of ADF, which is a, an elastic scale um, data transformation tool within ADF that executes your transformations on Spark. So you can leverage classic patterns or typical patterns that you've used in the past to load data warehouses, your ETL patterns, but it's important to note some of the differences in the way that you'll do things in the cloud and at scale. So let's go through some of that. So you see on my screen is a sample pipeline. I called my pipeline daily data warehouse pattern. So this is a pattern that you would um, probably uh, build something similar to this and you would execute this during maintenance windows or uh, sometimes you also see data warehouses load during the day. But let's say, for example, you want to execute this every day during a, a nighttime maintenance window. So when you build a pipeline like this, you'd probably want to build a trigger for this. So um, within ADF, we have the triggering capability and you would build a schedule trigger to uh, um, to build schedules around when you would want this uh, data warehouse to be loaded using um, this pipeline. I'm not going to talk about that here in detail. I'm going to instead talk about the pattern itself. So this should be fairly familiar to you. I'm, I'm going to first take the uh, changing data. Now in this case what I'm using is a movies database uh, CSV file that would uh, get landed every day or whatever frequency that may be. And then uh, I'm going to stage it first. And then after I stage it is when I will build my aggregations and then load my uh, data warehouse. In this case, my data warehouse is an Azure SQL database analytical model that has contained in it aggregations of movie ratings by year. It's a very simple example, but it's a canonical model that can be leveraged for your own, um, your own use cases. Now, in a more traditional sort of on-prem model, when you're building a data warehouse with ETL tools, you may stage that data sometimes within a target database. So to be a little bit more economical in leveraging the cloud in the uh, scale model, elastic scale model of the cloud, but we can stage that data in uh, Blob Store or ADLS. That'd be a very economical way to do that. So let's dig into the data flow that does that. So my file sources, like I said earlier, are going to be this CSV file, which is uh, the movie's data. And I have schema drift turned on on Dataflow. This way, if I get any additional columns or changing columns within this flow, it won't break my, uh, my ETL. Okay, so I'm just going to take every um, file that, that lands through this data set, which is going to be just one single file first. And when that happens, I'm going to um, have no action occur at the end of that. Now, I could say that when I'm finished with this, I'm, I want to delete that source file. That would probably be what you'd want to do once you're in production. For this demo, I'm just going to have no action on it. We can look at the projection, which is the, um, the logical projection within my data flow of the physical file. You can see that I have uh, an ID which identifies each movie uniquely. I have the ratings, I have a Rotten Tomato rating. The Rotten Tomato is misspelled and has a space in it, so I want to change that. So I'm going to set a select to alias that column um, next in my data flow. And so I change it to Rotten Tomato properly spelled, and I have no space in there. The reason why I'm doing that is I just want to make sure that as I stage this in Parquet, so Parquet is the, um, the preferred format within Data Factory for data flows. I'm just going to make sure that I have no worries about any kind of special characters or spaces or things of that nature. Now the next thing I'm going to do after I do that is I'm going to add a, a date of ETL. This is a very common uh, part of a pattern such as this that you will perform in loading data warehouses so that you can keep track of the lineage and of the, um, uh, the, the timestamps of your ETL success and fail. So I'm going to put a timestamp called current date and I'm going to call that date of ETL. This will generate a new column. Now if I look at the inspect, which is my metadata, I will see that I now have that column and I have my Rotten Tomato alias properly and I'm good to go. So I'm going to then um, stage that data and instead of using a database table I'm going to use a folder within blob that's going to store a parquet file. So my uh, sync is a parquet, I call it parquet stage and I have no schema behind that because this is just going to drop the result of this um, of this process is going to just create a new file or a series of files. I can create a new folder by specifying the folder here in my data set. And then what's going to happen is it's going to convert my CSVs to Parquet. And that, so the Parquet is going to have the rich schema to it. So the inspect will show you the data types. These will get stored along with the data. So Parquet is a very nice format to use for that. Now we can test with debug. I have my debug on. And we can uh, go ahead and click uh, fetch data on this. Then we can make sure the data looks that we want to before we go ahead and execute this. 
let's just take a quick glance at our data make sure that do a sanity check here we've got our dates now We've got all of our data with our data types. Now, one other thing I want to show you is that I ran a data preview in debug mode, and uh, I'm not going to write any files because debug mode is really just going to be looking at data just for uh, sanity checks and unit testing. Now, within my settings on my um, sync, you'll see that I have sets that when the data gets landed, I want to clear the folder that I'm creating so that there's no junk in it. It's going to get cleared out. And I'm saying that I want to... Um, create a new name for the um, staging f uh, files is going to get created. Now, there's going to be multiple files, so I'm calling each one n in square brackets. That'll be the partition number. Now, the reason why there's multiple partitions is because we're using Spark, and I can set in the optimize. I've set here very simple partitioning, just round robin, no hashing or anything more advanced. I just set partitioning on, and I'm saying, give me 10 different partitions. So now the data will get split up across 10 different files. And let's take a look at what those files will, get look, will look like when you execute this. So before I execute that, let me, let me show you the rest of the patterns. That's just the staging, right? That is only setting partitioned data coming in every day and creating staging files for that in Parquet. Now we need to pick up those staging files and then we need to load those into the target data warehouse in the database and then we also need to create the aggregations. Alright, so let's look at how we do that. Now on the other side of, of uh, this, the source for this data flow, we're going to pick up those um, movie Parquet files that were landed. Again, I have schema drift on in case any of this schema changed. So this is um, flexible schema handling built within data factory, data flow. And I'm going to say, give me every parquet file that was landed in that folder. Uh, I can also set a, um, a variable or a column or a field that's going to store the current file that is being processed. So it's going to loop through these for me and it'll store the current one here in this uh, variable that I called current file name. Again, I'm not going to have any action taken. I could delete these. These are volatile staging files. It would be fine to delete these. But for this demo, I'm not going to do that. The projection can get picked up from that folder and it will tell you what the projection is and that is the right schema. Let's create some aggregates. So the aggregates I'm creating, uh, really simple. I'm just going to do one single rating by year. So the formula for this uh, is simply taking the, um, the rating is, I think it was a 1 to 10 or something along that lines. And the Rotten Tomato is a much higher scale of something like up to 100. So I wanted to make these be a little bit more um, on the same level. So I'm multiplying the rating by 5 to give it a little bit more weighting, adding that together, and then I'm taking the average, rounding that to two places so that I get some nice looking um, decimal values out of it. Good enough. And now I have a. I want to create a surrogate key. So this is. Um, I'm using the derived column. For this, you could absolutely use surrogate key for it. But I wanted a little bit more of a longer key. So I'm using a hash of the year. And then this way, every year that matches, I'll have the same hash value um, for that. And I'm going to store that as a key within my um, analytical schema. Now I have an alter row here that I'm calling filter rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a filter. And I'm going to say that any time that the um, data comes in, I want to upsert. So this is setting the policy for how I'm putting that data into my data warehouse. I'm saying that everything, because I'm just saying true for my formula, everything's going to be an upsert, which means if it matches that key, that your key I made in my hash, then update that row. If not, then create a new row. Very simple. And in my sync, I just have to say allow upsert. My key is that year key that I created for my hash, and uh, the uh, the data set for this is the movies data warehouse, which is my Azure SQL database table. Uh, let's see what else I want to show you in this. I think that's pretty much it. So the mapping is auto mapping. So there's only three columns coming out. This is a very simple analytical schema with the year value. So this is my group by ratings by year is my uh, aggregation I created, and your key is that key value. So that looks like the schema that I want. And we are ready to go. So let's go over to the pipeline, and we can now execute this. Now I'm in a debug mode, which is great. So for my pipeline, I can click debug, which means that this will hit a warmed Spark cluster, Databricks cluster, and I will be ready to go. Now we can watch the, the progress uh, down here. So each one of these steps is going to go serial manner, because I have the, uh, the conditional line between the two different activities in my uh, data activities in my pipeline. We can refresh the status down here. And then as this builds, <coughs> and excuse me, and as each activity executes, you can drill into the, uh, I can't do it right now because it's still running, but you can click the eyeglasses and you can see the, um, the execution plan from each of the detailed transformations occurring 
in each of these activities. Now, right now we're in the staging. So what staging is doing is it's going into those that source CSV. It is partitioning it out, round robin style. It's going to give me 10 movie files. It's going to clear out that folder first. It's going to be 10 parquet files for staging. Once that's done, then we'll build the aggregations. Let me go over to my um, storage um, container first and show you that um, the data looks something like this. Here's the uh, CSV source. That's all fine and good. But I'm going to go to the output folder and let's take a look at this stuff as it begins to land in my blob store. So the folder we're using is DW staging and output. And as you can see right now, it just has some working files in there. I had a bunch of parquets in here before, so it already cleared the, the folder. Now it's going to start to, um, I can close this if I just scroll over here, I believe. Now what it's going to do is it's going to start to fill this up with the partition files, which I named per partition. So you'll see that name come in here, and I call it movies n. This is going to be movies 1 through 10 is what you're going to see uh, land in here. All right, great. And now we can start to see them land. So we get movies 1, movies 2, movies 3. This is round robin partitioning, and so it's going to be a fairly um, equal balance of number of rows in each um, in each file. This is a very useful feature within um, Dataflow in ADF, and you could use this uh, very simply within a Dataflow just to partition large files uh, and create your own partitioning um, set of partition files in a folder. Even if you don't want to transform the data, you can at least you know just split it up uh, in this manner as well. Okay, so once these are all done, we'll know that this process is completely done because these working files will go away and all we're going to be left with is these parquets. So let's take a look at what the status looks like back on the um, pipeline view. All right, so we're done. So let's go take a look at the uh, final results of the folder. And yep, so now we just have those 10 files. Okay, great. So we're on to the second stage of our daily loading where we're going to um, load from that stage. We're going to create the aggregates and load up our uh, schema, our star schema, our analytical model, and so on. So uh, we're on to that one. Now we can click the eyeglasses and we can see um, what the stages look like within that first activity. And uh, what we should see here. So a single partition to read the CSV, and there were 9,124 so rows, sorry, 25 rows. <laughs> These are the number of columns. This is how long it took to read. Uh, the select was also performed against one partition, took four seconds. The drive column also took four seconds. And the staging is where we created those 10 different partitions. As you can see, they're a fairly equal number, uh, a fairly equal number of rows across that, uh, that set. All right, so let's close this. Now, to look at the progress of the loading of the star schema, uh, of the analytical schema, let's go over to the database. All right, so uh, right here, the movies DW is what we are loading. So I already had some data in there, so we can run this. And um, actually, you know what I should do is let me actually truncate this before this actually happens, just to show you what's going to happen. So I don't think it's gotten to that point. It's probably still reading the files. Remember, it's it's going to scan through each one of the partition files and then load those into the database um, using Parquet within Blob Store as staging. So because I'm using Upsert, truncating that table will be fine because it's going to insert the new rows um, without any updates to anything. So it's update or insert because I'm using Upsert. Okay, and there we go. So there's our set of rows. There's the hash key that I created for a unique key for each year. You see the year is, uh, I ordered in my query by year. So the year starts with, uh, there were some nulls in there. There's a negative number. In other videos, I use the status set 2 to kind of clean the state up a little bit. And then there's the aggregation for each year. So now every time you go to run this, um, this pipeline, because I'm using upsert, it will um, update each of the aggregated values within your um, uh, your table and it will insert new ones if you get new year values every year every time there's new year you have new value so that's a data warehouse loading pattern in adf using data flows thanks for watching bye